Hey guys, well this is uh, part two now of um, tanning your own hides using the hide tanning formula. Um, if you haven't already watched the first video, go back and check it out. It uh, walks you through the steps up to this, pro uh, this point in time. Basically what we did is uh, we took our beaver which was skinned and fleshed. We uh, soaked it in a bit of water to get it flexible. Once we had it nice and soft, we uh, poured some salt on it. We used just iodized uh, table salt. Covered it, rubbed it in real good, let it sit for 24 hours. Then we took that old salt off, we wiped it off, we put some new salt on. Rubbed it in, let it sit for 24 hours. Then we washed it all off really good. And then we added a half a pound of salt per gallon of water. We used just a garbage, plastic garbage tub. Mixed it up really well. We let these hides sit in it for six to eight hours. I was right around seven and a half hours. And uh, we washed them after that in just uh, Dawn dish soap. We washed them two times and rinsed them probably four times or more. And then here we are. We're ready to uh, start rubbing this in. What I did was I got it uh, nice and warm. I boiled some water and I put it in a cup and I submerged it in. I did it two or three times. I've got some gloves on. You could use a brush. And uh, we're going to start to work this stuff in. Gonna rub it in nice, make sure it's all massaged in. Every little nook and cranny. Gonna rub, rub, rub. Not gonna be scared to make a mess, that's why I like to use uh, a vapor barrier underneath. Work it in as good as we can. Make sure we get all these edges. Anywhere that the material or the, the hide looks a little bit thicker or tougher, we're gonna work it in a little bit better. Make sure that we really get it. These leg holes. There, that side, this one's done. We can go to the other one. So I'm not sure if you can see, but the bottle's right about there. So it went down about an inch, inch and a half. Might have to add a bit more onto this one. I'm pushing down kind of hard, trying to uh, really massage it in. Making sure that I get all the edges. Around all these leg holes. There's a, a hole here I'll sew up after. I should have sewed it up before. I'm gonna put a bit more on this one. Make sure I'm getting it everywhere. Kind of smells like uh, orange juice, like an orange, uh, orange degreaser. So 
so there we have it all rubbed in after that it says fold the skins flesh side onto itself and leave for overnight after 12 to 16 hours we can open the flesh up to the air and we can slowly dry it for two or three days and as it dries we can start stretching it and working it so we're just going to fold these up just like that they're going to stay right here on this table till tomorrow tomorrow morning that'll be uh, 12 hours and then we'll be able to uh, hang them up to dry I've got a rope back here I'll keep them uh, in the garage kind of uh, cool in here no sun and uh, we'll start stretching it well it's been about uh, 17 hours since we used the hide trapping formula on our two beaver pelts or hides I guess um, it's time to open them up just have a little look and basically they just hang for the next couple days and as they start to dry and start to uh, stiffen up we're just gonna work them and try and get them a little softer uh, you might be able to hear I got a bit of a fire in the in the stove it's uh, sitting right around two or three degrees Celsius so that's uh, under 40 Fahrenheit I guess so uh, that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna open them up have a little look see uh, if they've changed in color or anything like that um, this is a first for me so thought I'd share my experience and uh, as I get go through the breaking process I'll show you and uh, we'll learn together so let's just have a quick look at the uh, beaver, see if it's changed colors or anything like that. Uh, it doesn't really look like much. Everything feels nice and soft, or softer at least. As this dries, it's going to start to stiffen up. Uh, one thing I do want to do is get it up off, off of here because it will slowly start to uh, develop a bit of mold. I've got a couple racks that I'm going to put up on some... Uh, on some wood or something to allow some airflow. Uh, put these down on top. They'll drape over a little bit, but at least that'll allow some air to flow through. So I'll get that set up and I'll show you what it looks like. But uh, basically, now we got to leave it for another two or three days. Let everything uh, dry. Once it starts to dry and get stiffer, then we're going to work it. We're going to stretch those fibers out and get it nice and soft. And uh, then we'll be ready to start turning them into rugs. Well, we're back out in the garage. It's been uh, oh a little over a week now since I started the, uh, the tanning of the beaver hides. Um, the, everything's tanned up. Um, I didn't break them too much. I broke one just a little bit to get a feel for it. Um, but I don't need them really soft because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, put them on, the, on a piece of felt and sew them down. Maybe put some uh, sort of glue to help hold the center. But... Um, what I'm doing right now is I got it rubbed down with some sawdust, try and extract some of the oils, and then I'm probably going to bring them to a coin-operated laundromat and uh, throw them in the dryer for uh, just a little bit of time to see if I can't fluff them up. But uh, they're looking good right now, and uh, I'll just show you them quickly in the sawdust. There's not a whole lot to see just yet. So here they're in the sawdust, just kind of uh, a sawdust you would uh, get from... Uh, for your animals like chickens or rabbits it's just uh, pine shavings I just got it in I rubbed it in real good I want it to uh, absorb any of the oils that are left on the uh, the fur on the edges from where the uh, tanning solution came over the edge just rubbing it in real good try and get it uh, as dry as possible I'm going to rub it uh, oh, probably every couple hours and then I'll dump the shavings out and uh, put some more on. But try to uh, get it. Uh, you can see that it's still a little stiff. Um, I, I may uh, just warm one up, um, put some warm water on it just to soften it a little bit and try and break it. Maybe leave one, see how it goes. But. Uh, because I had to sneak out for work, I didn't really have a lot of time to uh, to get in there and, and break it properly. I left 
right when I should have started the whole process, but it's all right. We'll make do with what we got. But just rubbing this sawdust in, I can see that the, a lot of the fur is getting really nice. There's just some matted spots that uh, are full of the oil. So we'll come back, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in a little bit, and I'll let you know what I've done. Well, we've washed the beavers up again with uh, some soap and water and uh, rubbed them really good. And then uh, we stuck them in my wife's dryer. Um, hopefully she doesn't find out. Um, but having them in the dryer made a huge difference. Um, the fur is like super fluffy. All this nice uh, fluffy under fur has popped out. Um, maybe got a little bit too hot. Looks like, eh, no, it's just the, the fur itself. But uh, this one's a little bit damp. I may uh, just put a bit of, um, and that, that white breaking part, that's just from the dryer. That had nothing to do with me. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think I'll just, got a couple holes. But uh, no big deal. I think what I'll do now is I'm just going to go get a cloth with some really hot water. And I'm just going to put it on it so I can get it to go uh, malleable a little bit. And then I'm just going to rub a little bit more in just to soften it up. And uh, mainly to get it nice and flat. But uh, I'm really happy with uh, how it looks. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick up the, uh, the fur or not. But it's uh, really soft. Like you can see all the under fur. Oh, maybe down here. But uh, yeah, I'm super happy with that. Hey guys, well we're pretty much done with the tanning process. Uh, you can see that the white lines here kind of might look like mold or mildew, but that's actually where the leather kind of broke and uh, that's where you get the subtle, the softness out of. Um, I didn't worry about breaking them up too much. This was mainly done by the dryer and uh, once I was done tanning, um, I noticed that the fur was kind of oily, so I washed it in soap and water. Um, just uh, dish soap, Dawn. Just really scrubbed it up good, and then threw it in the dryer to dry just on my lowest uh, possible settings. I think they call it air dry on my uh, dryer. It's basically just moving the air around. And uh, you can see that right here, it's actually pretty soft, and anywhere that it hasn't uh, whitened up, probably so you can't see that. Like right here, it's nice and soft. And then down here, it's pretty uh, stiff. And that's, uh, you work that out through the breaking process. As it dries, you uh, stretch the fibers out and you can, when you pull on them or push on them, I guess, um, you can see them whiten up. And that's what all this is. That gives you the more uh, traditional look. I'm gonna turn these into a rug so I'm not overly concerned. Um, Got to go get some felt and some uh, like cotton batten, I guess, or uh, rug mat, I think they call it. And then we'll sew these up. Hey guys, well, we're all done the tanning process and uh, I got a few things I talk about. Um, some pros and cons and a few tips. Uh, things I did and things uh, you probably don't want to do when you're doing yours. So let's uh, jump into those. So my first tip uh, when you're going to start the whole process is once you get it skinned, your hide skinned and fleshed, wash it really well. Um, this one here, I didn't take the time to wash it very well and when I soaked it in my salt water uh, solution, all the dirt that was in the fur went to the skin side and it's really really hard to get it out. You have to scrub it and scrub it and scrub it. And uh, this one I didn't even pay much attention to it, the other one I did. and. Uh, yeah, I think if uh, you would, if I would have took the time to clean it in the first place, I wouldn't have had that issue. Second is, anytime you're drying it, uh, don't hang it. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but this one is really long and narrow because I hung it up. 
and this is one that's boarded and it's got that nice oval it's not tanned but uh, you know it's the same idea you want that nice round oval shape uh, not this long tapered thing you know like that's the head area so it's kind of goofy looking it's like a teardrop where I had hung it here and it all hang hung down so uh, that's a no-no don't do that <clears throat> third tip when you're applying your oil your uh, orange bottle trapping solution on here apply a small amount and really work it in good and then move on to the next spot if you put too much in all the oil is going to soak through your leg holes and through the hide itself and get into the fur and the fur is going to be an oily greasy mess and you're going to have to wash it again um, i washed mine the second time with uh, some dish soap again and then I reapplied that orange stuff just to make sure that it was uh, tanned and safe and and uh, and as proper as possible <clears throat> so those are probably my three big tips um, I think this stuff works really well at what it is um, I don't know if you would want to tan beavers for fur products like hats and mitts with this stuff I think it would require a ton of breaking. Um, this one here has been broke for a couple hours on um, an old fleshing beam post. And uh, you know, it's really, really stiff still. It's like, uh, it's tougher than cardboard. So um, I think thinner furred animals, uh, maybe some skunk or uh, I don't know, maybe a fox or something might work. Maybe an otter. Otter's kind of stiff maybe, but uh, maybe a fox or something would work well. But um, beaver I think is pretty tough unless you've got that wire wheel and you really thin down the skin. Um, there's people that do it, so no doubt you can. I think just the amount of work that goes into it might not be worth the effort. Um, you might be better off just to pay to have someone tan them properly and then they come back and they're nice and supple and, and beautiful. So that's kind of my thought on that. Um, <clears throat> the time invested isn't too bad um, you're not standing over these for hours and hours on end you're working for you know 15 20 minutes a half an hour and then they're hanging or sitting or soaking and then you're coming back to them you know eight ten hours later putting a bit of more bit of more uh, effort into it so if you're only doing a couple furs it's pretty easy going that way um, obviously if you're doing 15 20 30 furs then you're gonna have more hours invested in it so that's something to keep in mind the overall cost to do it is pretty uh, pretty low um, I think I said in the first video how much I paid I think it was about 15 bucks for the tanning solution and I think I paid like 12 bucks for all those boxes of salt and of course you can buy bulk salt uh, at most places so you can save a lot more money there um, I bought a big bag of salt from my farm and feed and uh, I think it's like a 40 kilogram bag or a 40 pound bag uh, I can't see the, the weight but yeah for about the same price as those boxes of salt so that's something to keep in mind But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy. Um, these ones here, I think I'm going to try and soak again and uh, tack them back on the board and see if I can get them to stretch more oval like this guy is. Um, the other two that I did first, they're upstairs in the kids' rooms. They didn't even want me to uh, sew any fabric onto the back. They just wanted them up in their room. So that's kind of cool. Uh, these ones here, I'm probably going to keep. I got two skunk, an otter, and two fox. The mice got into this fox <clears throat> and the otter uh, was one of my first critters that I got and I butchered up uh, a big hole in the chest area with uh, my fleshing knife. I wanted to use the dull side and I used the sharp side by mistake and as soon as I pushed I slid it up so it sat in the freezer for a couple years. Uh, I didn't want to throw it out but I didn't want to send it in and get uh, peanuts for it so I think we're going to get these tanned. Uh, probably give them to the kids hang them out uh, in the shack or maybe on the wall in the uh, house or something but but uh, I hope you enjoyed the the two-part series on uh, tanning with the orange bottle the trappers uh, tanning solution 
it's pretty easy to do. Um, I think if you spend some time doing it and really get a knack for it and pay attention to what you're doing, you can come out with some pretty nice product. Especially if you're considering maybe hooping beaver to sell or uh, just wall hangers, you know, tanning a fox so that someone could hang it up. Um, because furs are beautiful, they're a renewable resource, they're out there. Um, if you don't keep the population in check, then you end up getting um, disease and stuff that wipes them out. And then you get real big spikes where there's lots of them and then there's none of them. And then there's lots and there's none. And if you can control them, then you can keep that population in line. And they're always there. And uh, you can always take a couple here and leave them and leave some breeding stock. It goes for beaver muskrats uh you know all of the animals so whether you're big game hunting or small game hunting so um just uh, thought i'd show you the process i've wanted to do it for a few years now and uh just hadn't got around to doing it so finally i got off my butt and uh, tried it not too bad uh, i got a couple more bottles over there so i'm probably going to try and uh, tan up some more hides but uh I'm probably going to rework these ones and see what happens. So, uh, if you got some hides, maybe some squirrels, rabbits, or anything like that, uh, give them a try. Anything with thin skin is probably going to work a lot better than thick beaver. But uh, it was fun. Hope you can take something out of this video and uh, go tan some hides. We'll see you.